If you're a fan of Japanese animation, you may have seen female protagonists wear outfits as in the case of this, or this. And although the wearing of these quote-unquote Buruma outfits has now officially been banned from all academic institutions in Japan, and their actual purchases in Japan are mainly made by a number of questionable men in order to satisfy their fetishes, there was, believe it or not, a time in Japanese history when these quote-unquote Buruma outfits had to be mandatorily worn by all female students in Japan at school. So in today's video, we will discuss the rise and the much-deserved downfall and disappearance of the Buruma uniforms at Japanese academic institutions. First, let us have a look into how the term Buruma actually developed in Japan. From the fact that the Japanese utilized katakana alphabets to spell out the word, we can readily guess that the term originates from an English word, namely, bloomer. Between the 16th century to 18th century, the fashionable dress of the time consisted of a rigged skirt that dragged several inches on the floor, which obviously very much constricted the movement of the women who wore such dresses. So the readers of the Water Cure Journal, a popular health periodical of the time, actively began to promote the wearing of these quote-unquote bloomer dresses from the year 1849. These dresses were far more comfortable and unrestricting to that of the type of skirts worn by the women at the time, so were received well by many including Amelia Bloomer, a 19th century American newspaper editor and women's rights advocate whom the quote-unquote bloomer dresses were eventually named after by the year 1851. And such bloomers were first adopted in Japan when the Japanese physical educator, Inoku Chakri, brought back the bloomers and the cufflink skirts with her once she returned back to Japan from the United States in the year 1903. And now that we know when these quote-unquote bloomers were first introduced in Japan, we have to now ask the subsequent question. And that is how these original bloomers look nothing like the bloomer or buruma that was later adopted in Japan. So let's find out how the buruma in Japan that was implemented in women's physical education went from this to this. The event which catalyzed such a radical transformation in the design of the burumas in Japan was the Summer Olympics that was held in Tokyo in the year 1964. In the 1964 Tokyo Summer Olympics, Japan's women's volleyball team won the gold medal against the Soviet Union. The women's volleyball finals in the year had one of the highest watch rates in the history of Japanese television with a staggering 66.8% watch rate. And the tight-fitting shorts in which the Japanese women's national team wore at the time were called burumas. So with the immense popularity in which the national Japanese women's volleyball team had at the time across the country, these tight-fitting gym shorts began to be adopted and distributed all across Japan, with Japanese schools making these burumas a mandatory female uniform at the school physical education classes. But then again, although these 1960s versions of the buruma was indeed a lot quote-unquote shorter in the length of the garment compared to the original, it still did not look like these. So what led to this final transformation of these Japanese burumas? The official reason for this was the rise in popularity of the Eastern European gymnasts across Japan. To elaborate, in the 1970s, legendary female gymnasts such as Nadia Komanechi, famous as the first ever gymnast to be awarded with a perfect score of 10.0 at the Olympic Games, gained a lot of attention in Japan. And with Japan being a country that places extremely high value on perfectionism, the board members of the Japanese Federation of Physical Education suggested this type of gymnast-inspired design of lower body garment to be implemented to all female students partaking in PE classes in the Japanese middle and high schools. Now, whether the authorities in Japan's Federation of Physical Education were just weirdos who just wanted to make this as an excuse to have the young middle and high schoolers wear as skin-revealing clothes as possible during the school PE period, or whether they were indeed so awestruck and genuinely inspired by the athletic performance of these Eastern European athletes and wanted the female Japanese students to be catalyzed to similar levels of athletic greatness by first emulating the clothes that they were wearing, we can never know for sure. But what we do know for sure is that these quote-unquote gymnast-inspired burimas were actually incredibly uncomfortable for the students who had to be wearing them. As you can see from this blog post written by Juju Kurihara, who was a student in Japan at the time when these burimas wore a mandatory uniform for all female students attending PE classes, states that she was absolutely shocked when she found out that she basically had to be wearing underwear during the PE classes. And contrary to what the board members of the Japanese Federation of Physical Education believed, this style of burumas absolutely did not aid in any type of athletic endeavor, as according to Kurihara, they were extremely uncomfortable with rigorous movement leading to your actual underwear being shown. And with such a revealing piece of garment being the compulsory uniform for all female students attending PE, or any kind of sporting event held at school, it unfortunately garnered the attention of many, let's just say, pivarts in Japan. 
For instance, if there was to be a sports day or a sports festival held at the school, a bunch of suspicious looking men who are not in any way family or related to the female student arrived at the event with cameras taking photos such as these. Now, if I was a parent of a 13-year-old girl at the time, the last thing I would want is a detestable pivot taking photos of my daughter from the rear. Then these pivots who took these photos actually had the audacity to make a photo album out of these pictures in which they took and actually sold them as photo books. I honestly feel so sorry for the girls and the parents in Japan at the time who had to endure this. And now, Ms. Kurihara, who wrote the previously mentioned blog post, was not the only female student at the time who felt such intense dislike to the mandatory implementation of these burumas at school. In 1987, female students at Nagoya's Nishi High School conducted a protest movement against the burumas, stating that these burumas were not suitable to be worn in an educational environment such as schools. And a year after that, Japan's Asahi newspaper first looked into the problems associated with the buruma, meaning that the burumas were officially starting to be mentioned as a social issue by the media. Now, once a typical female student graduated from middle and high school, they most likely would never wear such burumas again. So a kind of secondhand shop for burumas and other type of school uniforms appeared in Japan, where the parents initially bought these secondhand uniforms for a far cheaper price compared to a new one. However, gradually over time, these secondhand school uniform shops took a turn to the worst direction as the main customer base transitioned from the parents who wanted to buy secondhand uniforms at a cheaper price to men who had certain fetishes for school uniforms. And once this happened, a weird phenomenon began to develop in Japan where the secondhand burumas already worn by other female students for years began to become much more expensive compared to the new ones with prices often rising up to almost 100,000 Japanese yen or around 1,000 US dollars for a piece of secondhand buruma. So with the exorbitant rise in prices of the secondhand burumas, the parents no longer had any incentive to buy them, meaning that the entire clientele of the secondhand uniform shops became men who wanted to fulfill their buruma or school uniform related as fantasies by purchasing the ones already worn by other students. Now, this leads to our next question. What drove so many of the men in Japan to have such out of reason fetishes with secondhand burumas, which then subsequently drove off the prices of the secondhand uniforms to exorbitant levels, and make these originally innocent secondhand school uniform shops ultimately to these strictly adult only establishments. As many of you guys may already be aware, the Japanese economy experienced this bubble period during the 1980s. And before the bubble burst, many corporations and business enterprises in Japan had more money than they knew what to do with, meaning that there was also more capital than ever that could be invested into the Japanese anime and manga studios. And while this is certainly debatable, Many regard the bubble period of Japan as the quote-unquote golden age of Japanese anime and manga as manga titles such as Urusei Yatsura, which is still one of the best-selling manga series of all time, or anime titles such as Gunbuster that is considered extremely iconic in the robot anime circle were all released during this time. And such manga and anime series had more than frequent occasions where the main female protagonist appeared wearing the buruma such as the main protagonist of the anime Gunbuster wearing a buruma literally like all the time throughout the series while attempting to defend Earth from the invasion of giant aliens, it is largely regarded in Japan that otaku fans and fanatics of such anime manga series just got way too into them and developed a not so normal at all fetish for this garment, took things too far to the point of actually going out there and purchasing these secondhand burumas, probably considering them as a quote unquote collector's item. So with such secondhand school uniform shops being more and more recognized as a social issue in Japan, particularly with the buruma, originally intended to be a quote-unquote gymnast-inspired PE uniform for all female students in Japan at the time, transitioning into a means for certain abnormal men in Japan to fulfill their S fetishes, the buruma was entirely banned across all schools in Japan from the year 1992. And although this Japanese gym garment has technically been banned from Japanese schools for more than 20 years now, its legacy and its presence in the Japanese popular culture as a part of that quote-unquote weird side of Japan still very much remains. Alright everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please subscribe to the channel and leave us your thoughts on the Japanese Buddha in the comments down below. And make sure to check out our book by clicking the link in the description as well, and we'll see you guys again next time.